All right, so yeah, this is me, Rob Dotson, developer advocate here at the Googles. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Um, uh, as Peter mentioned, I work on the Polymer project. My single like goal in life right now is to get web components into all of your hot little hands. Um, and uh, as we were talking about like what sort of sessions we wanted to do at this this conference, I was saying I really want to do something about actually like building elements. So I want you guys to see what it's like to actually like write the code and work with these things. Um, what I found personally is that when I'm hacking on an idea like over the weekend, or I, I just wake up late at night and I got this thing in my head and I'm like, I gotta get this out of my head. I gotta like see this on screen. I found that when I'm working with elements, it just makes me crazy super productive because there's a lot of really cool APIs and services out there that I wanna play around with, but it's just a bunch of work to like get them all set up in my app and plumb it all together and like glue all the bits together. And when I'm working with elements, I can actually like take an element that someone else has created, which, which just wraps their API nice and neat for me into a little tag, and I can just bolt those pieces together, kind of like Lego building blocks, right? I can put them together, I can get my idea out, I can, I can sort of deconstruct them even and like rearrange the elements and repurpose them and use them in a totally different way. So that's what I want to talk about tonight is uh, how do we actually use all these different elements. I'm going to start the, my clock here so I don't run too over time. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build a couple apps. You guys are actually going to like watch me do this live, so uh, fingers crossed. This goes well. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a street view tour. So we're going to build this application that connects to a backend. It's going to pull some data off that backend and load it into Google Maps. It's going to show us a description of the location that we're looking at in the map. And lastly, it's going to let us explore the space using a street view element. So that's going to be mashup number one. Mashup number two is going to be a map voice search element. So it's going to repurpose the Google map element that we're going to use in the first uh, mashup. We're going to use it again in the second one. We're going to be able to search it using either keyboard or our voice. And we're going to get it running on the phone using this amazing uh, camera contraption thing. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm just going to hop into code. If you guys can't see anything or if you see me making grave mistakes while I type out code, please shout it out. Um, and uh, how do you make, does anybody know how to make the sidebar bigger and sublime? I don't actually know. It's okay, you don't really have to see it. But okay, so what I got here is just a folder called development. It's a little hard to see over there. And I've got an element inside of here just called map tour. And you can't see the folder, but that's cool. And typically what I do when I'm starting any application is I create a little Bower JSON file. And inside of here, I find all the things that I want to install into my app. Can the people in the back of the room see this, like, sort of, kind of? Yeah, all right, this is not good. Okay. So I got a Bower JSON file here. And inside, these are the dependencies that my app is going to uh, use. So we got Polymer. We got this thing called XTag Imports, which we're going to talk about a little bit. Google Maps, Polymer UI Card. A bunch of really cool different things that we're going to bolt together. And I'm going to cover each of these individually as we get to them, so we don't have to worry about too much about what's going on in there. Uh, instead, we're just going to hop into Map Tour on Bower install. And that's going to go out, it's going to crawl the interwebs, and it's going to grab all these different things and drop them into my application so I can start using them. OK, whoosh, they're all in there. That's cool. All right, so I got all the stuffs that I need to use. I'm going to open this demo HTML file. You guys can see that. And first thing I got to do is I got to make sure to load the platform. That platform layer is very important. That's how we jump our browser into the future so web components work. Uh, regardless of the browser that I'm in, once I drop that one line of uh, JavaScript in there, I can start using web components, registering my own elements, using Shadow DOM. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do now that I have these superpowers is I'm going to import the rest of Polymer. I'm going to do this using an HTML import. So I'm using a little link tag here. I'm going to grab Polymer slash Polymer dot HTMLs. Now, anytime I start any Polymer project, I typically just stub out really quickly, like a simple Polymer element that just says, hello world. And I'm just going to clean this guy up a bit. So the thing that we're building is a little map tour. And inside, I've got a little template tag here. Whatever I put into that template tag, when the browser sees my new element on the page, it's just going to grab the stuff out of the template tag and render it for me. So to verify that Polymer is set up correctly, I'll just do hello world, right? This is really simple. This is, this is the most basic Polymer element that you can write. 
and hop over to my browser. Go to localhost 8080. And, okay, see, I do this all the time. I didn't actually use the thing after I defined it. Okay, lesson number one, do that. Um, <laughs> use the tag, okay? There we go, all right. Thank you for small miracles, please, thank you. Um, all right, so we got, we got our map tour showing up. It says, hello world. That's kind of like not the most fun thing ever. If I go back to the requirements for my really cool mashup, number one is I gotta connect to a backend service. So uh, show of hands, how many of you have ever seen or used Firebase before? Some of you? Okay. So for those of you who haven't, Firebase is this really cool service. You can basically uh, upload some JSON to it, and it'll create a little endpoint for you. And then you can just later on be like, hey, give me that JSON back. Just request it, and it'll send it right back to you. So I've got a little collection here called views. There's only one item inside of it but it's got a little bit of data. It's got some latitude and longitude for a, a location on a map that I want to load into the Googly Maps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this data off Firebase, I'm gonna get it into my app. And naturally, I know all of your brains right now, they're going to dollar sign dot Ajax. You're like, ah, okay, I know how he's gonna do this, but that's not how we're gonna do this. We're actually gonna use an element that the team created called whoop, core Ajax. So I think you guys saw a little bit of this earlier. So Core Ajax is an, a custom element that allows you to do XML HTTP requests completely declaratively, just using an HTML tag. So we're gonna, uh, actually before we do that, we're gonna grab this whole map tour thing that we've been building, and we're gonna turn it into its own, we're gonna turn it into its own file, maptour.html. And I apologize if this is a little hard to see. You can ignore this part. Maptour HTML. I'm gonna grab Polymer. This is just really like the standard way that you want to build your custom elements. You wanna build them in their own little HTML file that you import into your demo. So that way when someone Bower installs your element later, they can just link to it. So we're gonna grab maptour.html. So what that's doing is that's just grabbing this little file over here that I created. This is where we're actually gonna build our element. So you're gonna verify things look good still, still says hello world, rad, okay. Now I mentioned we're gonna use core Ajax, so let's just import that guy. Core Ajax. And the way you can configure core Ajax is pretty straightforward. First you can give it an auto attribute, and that's gonna say hey, Anytime uh, this tag, like the parser hits it or something, just, just go out and make the HTTP, HTTP request on my behalf. I don't, I don't wanna have to like call a method to kick you off. I just want you to like do your thing. And uh, as for where to go, I'm gonna grab this URL from Firebase, drop that guy in there, and we're gonna ask for the views JSON object. And when that data comes back from Firebase, I'm going to create a little scope variable for it called views. What, oh, thank you, you guys are good, thank you. Whoever said that gets all the stickers. Okay, um, did I do it again? Wait, what? Response, response A, okay. All right, response. Okay, so data comes back, I create a scope variable called views, and now that's going to be available throughout my element. Anybody can now bind to this views object and play around with this collection that just came back from Firebase. So I'm gonna just write h1 here, and I want views 0.name, and we'll also get like views 0.latitude. So this is just the data that I have in Firebase there. So I refresh the page, and I see Heron Island, negative 23. And I go back to Firebase, and that is the name of the location on the map that we're trying to like get into our application. Okay, cool, so uh, I didn't write any JavaScript, by the way, and we just completed the first line of our, our mashup here. We connected to a backend service, we got data, and we loaded it into our app. And the next thing I need to do is I need to get it into the Google Maps. And you guys have seen the Google Maps element a fair bit. If you actually wanna play around with it, it's up on GitHub at Polymer Labs slash Google dash map. Please go grab it and mess around with it, it's a lot of fun. And in my editor, 
I'm just going to import Google Map, Google Map.html. Remember, all these things just came from that Bower JSON file that I installed from earlier. So I've, that's, that's where they're magically appearing from. So instead of grabbing a uh, name and latitude and just dropping that into H1s, I'm going to drop it into Google Map Element. So I want its latitude. Uh, this guy, it's latitude. But thank you for if, if, if you guys were trying to save me from myself. And we want its longitude. And I just know later on I'm going to need to expose the map property for, for street view. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so I don't forget. And we got to write just a tiny bit of JavaScript here, or sorry, CSS here, to, uh, to style the Google Map element so it looks nice on our page. So we're going to set its display to block and its height to 100%. Okay. So we got data coming from Firebase into Core Ajax, and then from Core Ajax, it goes into our Google Map. Swap back over to our page, refresh. And whoa, there we go. OK, so we got a Google map here. It's a little hard to see. Like, where is Heron Island? I'm not quite sure. So I'm just going to add one more attribute, show center marker. And boom, OK. So these attributes and everything that I'm adding, these are just part of the Google Maps API. But the element has given me a nice like, declarative way of playing around with them. I don't have to get in there and write a configuration object and specifically pass it into the constructor of Google Maps, right? I can just say, hey, show me the center marker. And I get it. OK, so that's really exciting. I like that. So we got this thing appearing in Google Maps. Now I want to do a little like, crazy interop thing here. I want to make Polymer work with X tags. I want to actually like, use both of them in the same project. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our Google Map, and I'm going to kind of create like a, like a Grand Theft Auto style heads up display. I want to take the map and like, put it into a little card down in the bottom corner of my site. And then I'm going to drop in a street view element after that. So that way, when you're like in the street view element, you got the map kind of showing you where you're at. So to do that, we've got another element here from the Polymer team called Polymer UI card that we're going to actually put our map inside of. I don't know if that comes through super clear on the projector, but Polymer UI card is really nice. You get these cool, swipeable Google Now cards. So I am going to just import Polymer UI card. And I should mention, after I get this card in, I'm going to put it inside of an X tag. So we're going to drop it inside of this X tag called Flipbox. So uh, Flipbox, as Daniel probably mentioned earlier, shows you how to like, toggle these things back and forth. You get these cool 3D flipping effects. So I'm going to put two cards inside of here. The first one's going to show my map, and the other one's going to show an actual like, description of Heron Island, this place, this mythical place that we're trying to visualize. So we got our problem or UI card. And I'm just going to say Polymer UI card. And the nice thing is I can just like scoot the map like up in there, you know? And I am going to have to write a tiny bit of CSS to position this thing. And this is the last CSS I'm going to write. Uh, let's see. So we want our card to have like a width and height of like 275. And we'll give it some padding. And position absolute. We're going to put it in the bottom left-hand corner of our site. All right, so we got our card here. Semicolon. Oh, man. Thanks, guys. <laughs> OK, so we got our card here. And I uh, believe everything's right. OK, now I know the projector's messing me up right now. The projector's trying to wreck my game. I'm going to scoot this guy in. Or maybe he's not. Oh, you can see that. OK, cool. He can see that. It, it was cut off during the, during the earlier demo. There you go. See that guy? OK, so we, what's up? Oh, OK. Oh, shit. Well, the sign's really wrecking my game. Um, all right, for you sign people, here, look, it's over there, OK? Or look at that projector. OK, so we got our card down there. But I, I mentioned flip box, right? I want to flip this thing back and forth. I wanted to go do some cool stuff. So. We've been working, uh, myself and some of the guys on XTags have been working on this project called XTag Imports, which actually lets you um, 
import x tags using HTML imports. Sorry, this is the better URL. That's my fork. That's the URL you want, x dash tag slash x tag imports. So I'm going to import Flipbox. So x tag imports, x tag flipbox.html. Drop that guy. Basically like the same thing that we did to the card itself and the Google map. When we move the Google map into the Polymer UI card, now we're going to take that whole thing and move it into a flip box. And yeah, the, the name x dash flip box is different from the import, but that's by design. OK, so now we just like scooted this card up into the flip box, right? That's kind of cool. And I'm going to write another Polymer UI card for the back face. And we're just going to give this a div description. I'm going to use another binding, and we're still using this data object coming from Firebase. So I got my view, and what I want is its description. And maybe we'll drop the name in there as well so people know what the heck they're looking at. Mm, that looks good. It's looking good. Uh, should I be binding to the description on the map? Oh, yeah, that's cool. No, no, yes, that's, that's on purpose, yes. So uh, when you see this guy, what we're going to get is, oh, we need to write a little bit of JavaScript to tell Flipbox that it, homie's got a flip. So we're going to give it a little bit of an ID, and we're going to say, on tap, anytime anybody clicks on you, I want you to do your flip thing. Down here in my prototype, do flip. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just referring to flip box. I'm referring to its ID with this dot dollar signed up flip box. And I'm telling it to toggle. Man, oh, 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 wait, wait, time out, time out. We also need a little CSS. There we go. Whew. All right. So we got our little card down there with the name now showing. And when I click on it, I get this rad flipping effect. So you can see, oh, cool, OK. So now I know what the heck Heron Island is, right? Oh, I don't, oh, sorry, I didn't want it to remain on the back face. I wanted it to be hidden on the back face. Yeah. But yes, you're right. If I wanted it to remain in both places, I would put the H3 on both cards. Yeah. OK, so this is like the world's most boring application that I've ever built, right? It could, it could do so much more. Um, so the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to go over to customelements.io. And by the way, I recommend if you guys haven't been there yet, please like, go check it out and like, play around with it, because there's so much cool stuff on there. Like every time I go to customelements.io, I'm like, I want to build an app, and I, I just start like finding cool things on here, and I'm like, yeah, I want that one too, and that one, and that one, and I just start like bolting them together, kind of like a mad scientist. So there's an element here that I've got called Google Map Street View Panorama. I'm sorry that it has the longest name ever. Um, I'm probably going to rename it. <laughs> um, so what it does is it bundles up the API for working with Street View. So I'm just going to import this guy. Google map street view panorama. We're definitely going to copy and paste that. <laughs> Not HTML. Google map street view. OK, OK. Um, and up here, drop it into a tag. Wrap that guy. And we got to make sure to bind to the map property that we exposed earlier from our Google map down here so that we know that maps is loaded. And if we go back and we look at Firebase, there's all these things in here like heading and pano ID and pitch, things that we need to use inside of this element. So we're going to bind pano ID equal to view0.pano ID. And we'll do our heading. Whoa, that was crazy. We'll do zoom. I mean, it was helpful, but crazy. We'll do pitch. Okay, heading, zoom, pitch, pano ID, 
map. Let's cross our fingers. Let's see what we get. Oh, shit. Oh, my God, we got a sea turtle. OK. <laughs> Yay. There was much rejoicing. OK, so yeah, Heron Island, Coral Cay in the Great Barrier Reef featuring sea turtles, right? So this is actual like street view. You can play around with this guy. You can like see that he's actually got this other sea turtle who's like stealthing on him. I'm about to steal his stuff. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do just, just wiring together elements. Like I wrote, what? I think we wrote, this is our only line of JavaScript, really, right? And the rest of this, yeah, thank you. And the rest of this was just elements. We're just grabbing things, wiring them together, building blocks, right? OK, so uh, thus concludes the hair-raising uh, text editor live coding portion of the talk. Now we move on to the designer. So we're going to build this map voice search thing using the designer tool that you guys have seen earlier. So let's see, localhost 9000. All right, so this is uh, the current gen version of our designer tool. Let me make sure you guys can see that real good. All right. Uh, there you go. Can you guys see that good on both projectors? Okay, rad. All right. Current generation version of the designer tool. I'm going to drop a scaffolding element onto the page. I'm going to click this little button to make it fit. So the scaffold element gives me really like the, the bare bones of a responsive website. I get a sidebar that'll collapse for me if the viewport is too small. I get a content area where I can just drop things into. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a Google Map. My old friend Google Map, he's back. Um, again, this is the same Google Map element that we were just working with. If you look down here in the bottom left-hand corner, right, this guy right here, Google Map, same dude, right? But this time, we've, we just dropped him onto the page. And uh, what I want to happen is when I click these buttons over here, I want to change between roadmap view and satellite view. Okay? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to grab these guys, we're going to change their labels, roadmap, and satellite. And maybe we'll give them really cool markers, too. Those, those markers suck. There we go. All right. They look way nicer now. OK, so I've got two buttons here. And I've got a map, but they're not like talking yet. I want them to like, actually talk to each other. So if you hop over to the code view for the uh, editor, I'll try and blow that up for you guys so you can see a little bit better. So you've got these core items here. This is what I've been dropping onto my canvas, right? Roadmap, satellite, et cetera. And if you look, we're actually inside of a Polymer element. The only thing that we're doing inside of this uh, uh, designer tool, so we're just building one big Polymer element. And so that means we can use all of the features in Polymer in this code editor. So I can say, hey, on tap, I want you to show the road, or sorry, yeah, show the road. On tap, show the satellite. And then down here in the uh, prototype for our element, we're just going to say show road is a function. Show sat is a function. And we're just going to tell the Google Map element to set its map type equal to road map. And Click on satellite, set to satellite. A caller function, that's what, th on tap, do I need a caller function? No, I don't. <laughs> this guy right here, uh, it's a declarative event binding. So whatever I pass it right here, it's just going to like trigger that on my prototype anytime someone actually touches the element. Okay. So if we save it, uh, we can actually click this guy and preview it over here. And then when I click satellite, I get satellite view, I get the roadmap view. I resize the page, I get responsiveness for free. It's pretty rad, right? And if I take this phone over here, <laughs> it's 
So I got a phone, and what I'm going to try to do is preview this over here. So I'm just going to take this URL, open the dev tools, and say inspect device. We're using port forwarding to forward the, uh, the port that this is running on to our device. Mm. There we go. Man, it's like taking a nap. Oh, we so don't have port forwarding. That's cool. We can fix that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh, was there? Wait. Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Okay, thank you. Thanks, man. Yes. Oh my god. I I love all of you. <laughs> all right. Yes. Sweet. Okay, this thing. Whoa, hey, check it out. So here's my app running on the phone. And all I did was uh open up the tab that I was working with over here on the device and click on it. Switch to satellite mode. Click back. Roadmap. Cool, right? Okay, so now I'm using this designer tool and I'm actually like constructing a mobile app. I'm not even writing any code to do this. So the last trick that I want to do is I want to add voice search to this whole process. So we're going to go back to our designer. Enhance, there we go. And I want to be able to search for a location. So I'm going to drop a field up in here. And we're going to just drop that up in the top left corner. Because this is just an HTML element, I can actually change its style. So I can set its background color to white. And now you can actually see it up there. And uh, I need to bind that field to the map. And I'm going to use another element to do this for me, to do kind of the heavy lifting. So I've got an element here called Google Maps Search. It's a non-visual element, so I drop it on the screen. You're not going to see anything update, but over here in the Properties Inspector, I've got these two new properties, Map and Query. So I can bind those to the Google Map element, bind to its map property, bind the query to the uh, core input, which is the input field up here. And then my Google Map element, I'm going to tell it to bind to the search element that I just dropped on the page. So latitude is Google Maps search. Latitude dot, wait, result dot latitude. Longitude, Google Maps search. Result dot longitude. And zoom is 18. Okay? And we're going to also turn off the UI for Google Maps because it's like getting in my way. So if I switch to satellite mode now, let me save it, preview it. So hop into satellite mode, and let's like check out the Eiffel Tower. Whoosh. All right, so now we're in Paris. We're looking at the Eiffel Tower, which is beautiful. Um, but you know, we're building a mobile app, right? And typing with these gigantic hands is like impossible on a phone. So I would prefer if I could use voice search to do this. So we're going to go back to our editor. We're going to grab this little speech mic element and just drop it into our input field. And we're going to go to our core input and bind its value to that speech mic. Speech mic .transcript. So now, anytime I talk into the microphone, it goes to the core input. That gets piped to Google Maps Search, which gets piped to the Google Map itself. OK? You guys following that chain? So we're going to save this, preview it. Should be able to look at this on the phone. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Don't steal my phone, OK? <laughs> you will all be confiscated as you leave this event. Um, 
<laughs> oh my god, that's super funny. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, the, guys, the microphone's here. So hold. Uh, okay. So, please, the microphone. Um, now stop laughing because you got to be really quiet because we're we're gonna try to do this. Um, okay. Roman Colosseum. Yeah, what's up? Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Peter, I'm sorry I swore so much on stage. Um, okay, so I wanted you guys to get a feel for like what it is to actually work with these elements, right? Like, I, I, I don't want to do a high-level talk. I want you guys to actually see these things, because this is going to be the future. This is going to be like the improved developer ergonomics that I think a lot of us are after. So please go check out the Polymer website. Hit us up on at sign Polymer on the Twitters. Uh, you can find all my information. Oh, wait. Find all my information uh, on this slide right here. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming out, and definitely stick around for the QA. Thank <laughs> you.